Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. Judges 16, 1. I'll read from King James for just about three verses or so. It says, Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot, and he went unto her, went in unto her. And it was told uh, the uh, Gazites saying, it was told the Gazites saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in and laid and waited. They laid, waited for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night saying in the morning when he when it is day we shall kill him i'll stop at verse number three and samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them bar and all and put them up on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron certainly with your prayers and with the aid of the Holy Spirit today over C and I, we're going to continue to hit this, and 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 I declare and decree, we're gonna nail it down a little deeper today. Yes, yes. We're gonna to talk to you today about how to free yourselves from soul ties. Yes, yes, yes. How to free yourselves yes. from soul ties, and you may be seated in the presence of a great God. If you have paid attention and followed us in this series. You'll understand that we got around last Wednesday night to around chapter number 15 when the last time we saw him, talking about Samson now, uh, he was headed back to his father's house. Yes, yes, and uh, yes. say amen if you were with us. Now, if you wasn't with us, I don't expect you to talk back, but if I'm yes. talking to you, you ought to holler back and say something yes, to us. Now, yes. don't have me thinking that I was somewhere else preaching this message here now. Yes. And uh, we found he now headed back home. Now, a little upset, a little, up, little angry and uh, at his wedding feast, you know. And he was betrayed by the bride. Uh, you know, he betrayed his bride, shall I say, and uh, was outwitted by 30 Philistines. And uh, he was in his anger now yes. because he didn't kill a man, 30 Philistines. And yes. he didn't took their garments and he has now settled his gambling debt. Yes, you remember yes, yes. Uh, they wanted to know the riddle. Uh, yes, I wish yes, you say yes, something yes, to me yes, now. Amen. And as he has now settled his gambling debt because yes. you remember they put pressure, amen, on yes. the fiance uh, to tell the riddle. So then therefore, uh, you know, they can move forward. And so he talked, he talked about because y'all put pressure on her. You know, you she end up giving in to your pressure, yes, yes, and uh, yes. she end up giving you the answers to the riddle. And so, because he got the answers to the riddle, uh, he had to turn around and pay his debt. Yes, yes, and, yes. And uh, if you haven't read it, you ought to go back and read it, cause yes, it, yes. It, it says that he paid the debt and he started killing folk. Yes, Cook. yes. Yeah, but we also learned out that on that Sunday. That because he uh, ha is a Nazarite, yes. and that uh, according to the book of Numbers, uh, that uh, the Nazarite vow was that they were not supposed to be around dead people. Yes, 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 yes. I wish to wake up and, and hear the word today. Yes, yes, yes. And not supposed to even be in association with uh, anything that is a corpse. Yes, yes, yes. And not only that, but they're not supposed to drink anything from a vine that has grapes on it. Yes, yes, yes. Say amen to this. Yes. And uh, the last thing, they weren't even supposed to cut their hair. Yes. Say amen to yes. this. Yes. And uh, this young man seems to be defying the order all the way around. Yes. 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 Don't you ever get so frustrated, amen, with your children when it seems like they're not hearing you. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
just take it to the Lord in prayer. And so anyway, as I hurry up and do this little recap, we find that, you know, uh, that Samson now he wants revenge in chapter 15. And yes. he, he, he wants revenge because he thought he was going to be able to go back to the woman after he didn't cooled off yes. and yes. Uh, met with the father of the girl, you know, and say he got a gift for yes. her, you see. Yes, 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 and uh, he wants to present a gift to this girl, you know. And uh, now, now there was no consummation in marriage. Yes, yes, yes. Because he stormed off before they can even have a consummation, you know, meaning there was no intercourse involved. Yes. And so because he ran away, you see, uh, you know, uh, he comes back after he cooled off and he's trying yes. to tell the dad, I want to I want to follow follow through with what we agree. And you must understand the in my study time. In those days, hear this, they don't do it no more today, especially here in America. But in, 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 in those times, uh, if a man wanted to uh, take a, a young lady as his wife, there was something required called a diary. Come on. Yeah, D-O-W-R-Y. In other words, you had to pay what we call the bride price. Yes, yes. You just don't come and say, uh, uh, and nowadays, you know, y'all don't even ask the daddy, could you marry the child? You just, you just look up and, you know, and, and the girl is so gullible, you just end up at the courthouse, you know. No respect, no reverence, no honor, no, no, you get married in the church because we have a fear of God. You know, I'm not knocking the judge who married you and all that. He just doing it. She just doing her due diligence because you the one walked in there and asked for the judge to marry you. We get married in church because it is an honorable thing to do. And you're making a covenant yes. vow yes. before God and these witnesses. Well, in that day, it was customary that you don't even approach me to want to talk to my daughter without bringing the bride price. I, I'm not, I didn't find it in the scripture, daughter, but I do believe this young man had to pay the bride price. Yes, yes, yes. And now he's upset because he's lost the bride price. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and young ladies, I want to say this to you. If you're listening today, hear me in the spirit. You ought to wait for the blessing of your father yes, yes. and of your mother. Y'all ain't talking to me, but I'm going to talk anyhow because we're dealing with soul ties. And you, you don't want to rush into something that's going to cost you a day, but it'll take you a lifetime to get out of it. Because anytime a soul tie has been knitted, whether it's through intercourse or whether it's through verbal uh, contractual agreement, a lot of times these soul ties, they grow because you don't, you don't even have the knowledge or the understanding that you have the power to, to annul uh, the soul tie. Yes, yes, yes. Say amen to this. We're not dealing with Samson about all the women that he slept with. I'm not even trying to focus on him being angry and all of that. Yes. What I'm saying is he's operating in a rebellious spirit. Yes. Anytime your mother and father tell you not to marry somebody outside of your race, outside of what I, I, I have prescribed for you, and you ignore the counsel of that, then guess what? Because you ignore my counsel, I am not responsible to aid you in your rebellion. Thank God for victory. There's safety in a multitude of counsel. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for these three hand claps. Some of y'all ought to try. Your life will be a whole lot better if you learn to seek counsel before you. Uh, uh, you said it on Wednesday, overseer. You said that, a, 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 what was it? You said a, a wise man uh, don't run hastily into uh, danger. Wise men fool rush in, but wise men, yeah, tell a story, you know. Help Fools me out. rush in where wise men dare to tread. Okay, say it one more time. Fools rush in where wise men dare to tread. 
So in other words, the other thing, the other point I got in this is stop comparing your life to somebody else's life. A fool rushes in. But a wise person stops. I'm not going there. Travis, it'll, it'll save us a whole lot of uh, pain if these children would just learn to listen. See, it got shallow and nobody want to clap. I don't have to give you counseling if you listen. Just because you heard me the first time, it will save you a life of pain. Are you hearing me? Amen, Apostle. Even as we have been going through the book of Judges for ministers, elders, and deacons, yes. the book of, of, of Judges is really the groundwork to help us to understand what life looks like when there is no order. Ooh. It, it, it helps us to identify that we talked about that on Friday in class, but the book of Judges is, is the time period where they were living yes. under Judges prior to being under kings. Yes. But the problem was, and you would have read in several of the chapters, when there was no king in the land, there was no king. every man did what was right in his own eyes. When there is no king in the land, every man did what was right in his own eyes. And what we're finding is that Samson was doing what was right in his own eyes. He had heard the Nazarite vow according to Numbers chapter 6, but he did what was right in his own eyes. Even when we start looking through the text here in Judges 16, when he really begins to uh, be consumed by the Philistines, and he finally gives in and he tells Delilah what the secret is, and he thinks at this point in time, well, if you cut my hair off, he didn't say I couldn't have anything from right. the vineyard. He didn't say I couldn't be close to anything no, dead. No, no. He just associated the Nazarite vow with an outward show. Some of y'all have picked this up in a second. If I just look like I'm a Nazarite on the outside, then I'll fool everybody else. I'm going to keep going with this. He forgot about the other components of the Nazarite vow, which meant he could not be a part of any vineyard. He couldn't drink things from a vineyard. He couldn't eat the grapes from a vineyard. He couldn't be near a dead corpse when he was actively killing people. He forgot all about those other restrictions of the Nazarite vow. And the only portion of the vow he kept, he was the part about, I can't cut my hair. Why was that the only part, Mother Delena, that he kept? Because it's an outward show Drew it lets everybody think that I'm still a part of the Nazarite that I'm still following the Nazarite vow but I haven't kept the other portions of the Nazarite vow well some of you saying well overseer I don't see where you're going with that that's like us as Christians we do the outward thing of keeping the hair which is equivalent to coming to church we keep the outward thing of keeping the hair which is showing up for Bible study we keep the outward appearance but we don't do the things that people can't see we couldn't see if he was eating of the vine because when he went in and took up the, uh, the honey from the lion the Bible said he ate it on his journey so nobody even know he was eating it he, it, he did it privately like the things we do privately and nobody knows but I come to encourage you on a day that we have a God that sits high and looks low there is no searching for his understanding when we think we're hiding from him God says I know you're down sitting and you're uprising I know what you're thinking before you think it I know what you're going to do before you do it wherever you go there I am you simply cannot get away from me and keeping your outward external Nazarite vow is not going to make me think that you're obedient to me. If you offend in any point of the law, you offended in all of it. If you don't keep all of the vow, you've messed up the whole vow. If you don't keep the part about the vineyard, you still have to start over. If you don't keep the part about the dead corpse, you still have to start over. You can't just keep your hair, the outward extension, and think that you're going to maintain the Nazarite vow. And this is what the enemy deceives us today in making us think just just like Samson did, if I don't cut my hair, everybody still thinks I'm a Nazarite. Well, if I go to Bible study, everybody still thinks I'm in good standing. If I go to church on Sunday, everybody thinks I'm still in good standing. If I show up for the prayer line, they still think I'm in good standing. If you don't keep all of God's law, you've offended in all of it. 
We can't keep the parts that we want to keep and neglect the portions that we don't want to keep. When we look at this book of Judges, when there was no king in the land, every man did what was right in his own eyes. And those of you who have had the luxury of, of reading the book of Judges as a sign to you, we even find a man in chapter 17 named Micah. And Micah, the Bible said, he stole money from his mother. Yeah. Some of you haven't read the book of uh, Judges. But let me give you a quick synopsis in chapter 17. Micah stole money from his mother. The mother, he said, he, he, he one day he heard the mother cursing the person who stole from her. Mama said, you're not going to steal from me and it ain't going to have a backlash on you. So Micah hears his mother cursing whomever stole from her, not mindful that it was her own son who stole from her. And as he hears his mother pronouncing the curse, he decides to give the money back to the mother because he don't want to be the benefactor or shall I say the male factor of the mother's curse. But this is how twisted it is when there is no king in the land and people People will do what's right. The mother takes the money back from her son, but she gives back $200 or 200 pieces of silver to a silversmith to make an idol for her son. Is this not perverted? Yeah. You were the one who stole the money, but I'm going to take the money you've given back and make an idol out of it and put it in the house of my son, and you were the one who stole from me. But that's what happens when there's no king in the land, when there's no order in the land. Everybody will do what's right in his own eyes. And I've always told you in times past, you're never going to disagree with yourself. <laughs> If I say it's right, Jamari, it's right. If I think it's right, it's right. What are you comparing your morale to? What are you comparing your, your rationality to? If it's according to your own standards, if you deem it right, you're going to do what you think is right. But I wanted you to understand that the word of God serves as our barometer for righteousness. It's not in your own estimation. It's not how you feel about it. When God wrote the word of God, he never asked you if you wanted to insert that scripture or not. He never said, do you you want to put an agreement on it he never said do you think you can do this or not when the word was written it is the inspired word of God given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for correction doctrine reproof and instruction in righteousness and God said that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works so when God allowed the word to be written he was trying to perfect us and furnish us unto good works and he never said let me see if you want to do this or not when there's no king in the land, you make your own standards. You make your own rules. You live by your own mantra. You live by your own standards. And as a result of this, this young man's mother brings an idol to him. You know what he did with an idol? When where there's no king in the land, every man does what is right in his own eyes. This man takes the idol, Sonia, and makes a shrine out of it. So it wasn't enough for him to have an idol. He makes a shrine for whoever else comes to see the idol. They can enter into the house of God as well. But see, what he was trying to do, Shatina, was to create his own religion. You said, well, where did you get that from, overseer? Because he appointed his own son to be a priest. How your son going to be a priest when you ain't even from the tribe of Levi? And if that wasn't enough, he made an ephod, Ladasia, which is the garments that the priests wear. Why are you making ephods and assigning people to be priests if you have not been deputized to do that? Well, that happens when there is no rule in the land when there's no king in the land everybody will do what is right in his own eyes he was in essence creating his own religion because there was no order and I come to serve notice on a demon on this morning who has a problem with order structure who has a problem with the order of God the business of God God is doing what needs to be done to preserve your soul and to keep you from touching the unclean thing to keep you from stepping into a realm that you said 
simply can't get out of to keep the enemy from pulling you so far from God that you can't make your way back. And if you understand any of that, you ought to be thanking God for the things that you're not doing simply because there's a king in the land, simply because there's order in the house, simply because there's a standard in the house of God. When there's no king in the land, every man did what was right in his own eyes. Yeah. And so we see yeah. Samson doing this. We yeah. see him all the way from chapters 14, 15, and 16 violating the Nazarite vow according to Numbers chapter 6. And then when he finally gets caught with Delilah, basically he tells her, if I cut my hair. Yeah. He didn't mention anything about, well, if I have anything from the vineyard. He didn't mention if I have anything or get near a corpse. He only thought that the Nazarite vow, Demetrius, was simply about cutting his hair. I want to ask you and want you to have a rhetorical answer. What things do you think are only important for your salvation? What are the things that you think only you need to keep that part and the rest doesn't matter? Because it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. It's those little things that we think are insignificant are the things that trip us up. When he got ready to be overtaken by the Philistines in chapter 16, hallelujah, he had already broken the Nazarite vow. So when his strength had left him at that point, he was building up for God to take his hands off. It wasn't just God took his hands off of it because he cut his hair. That wasn't the reason. You had already been doing so much that led up to me removing my presence away from you. That was just a straw, Stacy, that broke the camel's back. I got to ask you again rhetorically, what things are you thinking? It's okay for me to do this, but this is an exception over here. Because the enemy will make us think we're right. Every man's way is right in his own eyes. But it is the Lord who weighs the spirit. You can deceive yourself. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. The enemy will have you agreeing with yourself in order to pull you from the presence of God. In order to pull you from the place of God. And unfortunately, nation, it has worked with so many believers because in your your own mind you were justified for doing what you did and the enemy packed you on your back mother and told you you got a right to do that that's the way it should be it doesn't matter what they say forget what they say you ought to do what you ought to do and those are the little foxes that have destroyed your vibes because every man's way is right in his own eyes but it is the Lord who weighs the spirit when there is no king in the land, when there's no order in the house, when there's no standard, when there's no accountability, when you don't have to give in or check in with anybody. You will do whatever you want to do because you don't have nobody to answer to. But those of us who are accountable to something, the Lord keeps us in perfect peace. The Lord keeps us from stumbling. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the living God raises up a standard. He won't allow the enemy me to come and overtake us no good thing does he withhold from us those of us who are accountable the Lord puts a hedge of protection around us. those of us who are accountable the Lord prospers us even as our soul prosper those of us who are accountable we sleep good at night those of us who are accountable jinx we sleep good at night and we wake up refreshed in the morning those of us who are accountable we love the Lord because he heard our cry those of us who are accountable we enter into his gates with things given and into his courts with praise those of us who are accountable we are not double minded and we are not confused those of us who are accountable no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper and we know that every tongue rising against us in judgment it is always condemned we know that those who are accountable live a life of peace with Jesus Christ because we have to answer to God for the things and the deeds done in our body but those of us who feel we don't have to answer to anybody it is a quick banana peel on your way to destruction because the enemy wants you to think you're justified in your response and in your choices Mariah because every man's way is right in his own eyes 
but the Lord pondered the spirit. When there is no king in the land, when there's no order, when there's no rule, when there's no standard, when there's no command, when there's no leader, when there's no leadership, things begin to disintegrate and fall to pieces because Jenkins said, I want to go in. Jamar said, I want to come out. DJ said, let's go right. Paris said, let's go left. Mother Equilla said, let's go over here. Mother Delana said, Let's we, how do we decide what the order is? Everybody got an opinion about something. Yep. And only people who have problem with order are disorderly people. Yeah. Are disorderly people. And this is, Apostle, what the book of Judges is about. It's easy to slip into soul ties when there are no orders and no recommendations yeah. and no accountability. Yeah. It's easy to slip into a soul tie because there is no spiritual standard. Yeah. There is no spiritual standard. So I'm allowing my soul to make any decision that it desires to move as long as it pacifies my desire, my intellect, my mind, my emotions, and my will. Wow. When there is no order, it births and it breathes that spirit in the soulish nature. It cultivates it because everybody can do what it wants to do. Can you imagine what lawlessness would look like in this land? We, we still coming up short in this land, but could you imagine if there were no laws? Wow. It would be pandemonium. Yeah. It would be bedlam. Yeah. It would be chaos. People would run lights. They already run lights and there's an order in the land. They will run and then if I turn the corner because I didn't get, extend the courtesy to you since you got there before me, I'm going to stop my car, approach your car. If I can't catch you, I'm going to get in my car and chase you. And you know what happens when people start to go back and forth. When there is no order, people will make up their own order, Ladasia, and usually it leads to chaos and destruction. If there was no order in the land, we would just go into supermarkets and then we'll just get the five finger discount. I take what I want to take because I'm hungry. I don't have to pay for bread. I know y'all selling bread, but I ain't buying bread today. I'm taking bread on the day. What would happen if there was no order in the land and everybody was doing what they wanted to do? Everybody be walking around here carrying weapons and people would be in simple peril and danger. We wouldn't even, I know I wouldn't even come outside because people who are so foolish, if you look at them the wrong way not even say anything the wrong way Fernando you look at them the wrong way they are ready to pull their weapon out because when there is no law in the land everybody will do what is right in their own eyes they'll make up their own law they'll do what satisfies and pacifies them and this is what the children of Israel were dealing with in these 21 chapters in the book of judgment in the book of judges there was no king and everybody was just doing, this is how you can have a baby, Samson, born from his mother's womb, whom the mother had taken the vow when she was pregnant with her son and this son to come out the womb, and yet he's so defiant. But y'all remember in Numbers 13, how the Bible declared, I think it's in verse number four, the Lord said he was going to use Samson's rebellion for an occasion to go after the Philistines. Try, no, judges. Judges 13 and 4. He would use Samson's rebellion as an occasion. Hallelujah. Go to 14 and 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was going to use that Hallelujah. in order as an occasion against the Philistines yeah. because he already knew that this young Samson, even though he was told about the Nazarite vow, even though he was told he couldn't drink from a vine, even though he was told he could not be near a corpse, even though he was told not to cut his hair, God knew he wasn't going to honor the vow. Wow. That's powerful. And I want you to think, what does God know about me? What does God know about me? What does God know that I won't do and I won't keep and he's given me a commandment not to do and to keep? Could it be he's assigned me to do it anyway and he knows I'm not going to keep it, but he's going to use the rebellion for an occasion against his enemies. Are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? Because you, you have to understand God used Samson not because of his sin, but despite his sin. God can use anything. He can use anyone. 
and he will get the glory when it's all said and done but when this is all said and done even though Samson was used we saw he killed a thousand Philistines in the chapter we saw how he killed 300 foxes we saw how he killed most of the Philistines after uh, the wedding situation where his wife was given away we saw how he went and killed some Philistines in order to get the 30 exchanges of clothes he's doing a whole lot of killing and that was God's occasion against the Philistines because he heard his people cry saying have mercy on us Lord and he decided to use Samson's rebellion for his glory I want to encourage you on the day God don't have to use your rebellion for his glory he can use your obedience and you can live after it's all said and done and God can still get the glory out of you fulfilling what God needs to be done you don't have to walk in rebellion like Samson for God to get the glory because even though God gets the glory you get the recompense of your decisions yeah, yeah. you're going to pay for your decisions yeah. because we see that Samson paid the Bible declares he had cut off they shaved off his hair and, and I'm trying to give you a synopsis because this is really not our focus for the day we want to give you the points on uh, dismantling these soul ties they shaved off Samson's hair he's lying in Delilah's lap some of you are lying in the enemy's lap the enemy has anesthetized you has given you a swoon in your head and you don't know whether you coming or going but the enemy has comforted you in such a way so that he can bring destruction upon you this is what he did with Samson he made her him comfortable in Delilah's lap so when they came with the shavers they were able to shave off his hair and when he got ready to rise up as he did in times past he didn't realize DJ his strength had left from him and the thing that he thought he was going to do as in times past, he didn't have the strength to do it. Listen, beloved, there comes a point in time when God finally will get tired enough of us foolishness and no longer will he continue to cover us and continue to protect us in the foolishness that we're doing. God will eventually step back and allow you to do whatever you've been trying to do, whatever you want to do. God said, if that's the way you insist on going, I'm going to take my hands off and whatever you encounter is your decision. Decision. they plucked his eyes out blinded him and his strength had failed him unlike it had before he thought well because I kept my outward Nazarite vow I never cut my hair I still look like a Nazarite even though I'm not a Nazarite that I can get away with this what is it what is it what is it that we're keeping an outward show on but inwardly, God says you're failing in these areas, that this is a covenant between me and you. This isn't about you and apostle, you and overseer. This really ain't even about you and showers of blessings. This is about me and you. I've instructed you. I've told you. I've led you. I've come to you. I've spoke to you about this. And you're continuing to walk in this way. And you know that's not the way that I've told you to go. Because it's easy to see it with Samson in the word of God. But we very seldom do introspection to see it when it's happening to us. Many of us, we have a Nazarite vow in the sense we're keeping the outward part, but we're not doing the matters of the heart. And God is watching us. And so he got ready to get up and to bring destruction, and he couldn't. He could not do it, Apostle. And I firmly believe that his strength had failed him because he had so much of his soulish nature that was governing his choices that the spirit didn't have an opportunity yeah. to come in and turn him in another direction. And that's one of the most dangerous places to be in. Yes. It's dangerous to think that you have power. Yes. And realize when you need it you don't have it yes apostle yes I, I believe one scripture says how God is long suffering yes 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 with I'm us willing, he, yes. he 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 tolerates us yes. uh, and and the problem with him tolerating us I believe that's in Romans he says how long yes. shall you continue in sin that God's Romans grace six. may abound yes that's in Romans 6 I believe yes. that he is Romans 6 round 23 I believe uh, uh, if y'all can find that for me. I just want to make sure we're in the book. Romans 6. 6, what is it at? Uh, 6 and 1. Go to 6 yeah. and 1. I'm sorry. 6 and 1 uh, yes. media. I, I want you to see this because I don't want y'all to think we're just making this up. There it is. 6 and 1. What shall we say then? 
Yes, Shall yes, we continue yes. in sin that God's grace may abound? Put in the NLT for me, please, because uh, I want you to see this because I think when God wants to use us, then we look up and we don't feel him. We don't experience him. Now we are angry with God because yes, now yes, here yes. comes the spirit of failure. Yes, yes, yes. And that expectation only came in because you wasn't seeking God. Yes, yes, yes. Failure is not, there is no failure in God. Amen. They said, well, then, shall we keep on sinning that God can show us more and more of his what? Wonderful grace. Verse 2, please. Look what it says in verse 2. Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Well, you continue to live in it because you ain't dead to it. A dead corpse don't feel. Yes, yes, yes. You can slap a dead corpse and then they're going to turn around and slap you back. Yes, come on, Pastor. You can kick a dead corpse and, and you can do it all you want. It ain't going to get up and, and get you back. Because it's lost its soul. It's lost its spirit. Yes, it's gone. Yes, yes. The problem with sin, if you don't kill it, it's going to keep raining. Yes, yes, yes. And some of us, we think that we can master it. That's how, that's how uh, uh, Samson thought he could master it even after knowing he was violating the oath. Yes, 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 yes. And, and that's how the devil played with us. We, we, we still think God's glory is on us knowing that we just Come sinned. Come on, Pastor. Yes, yes, yes. And, and what happens is, daughter, because he don't kill us instantly. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Because you don't die in it. That you ought to be thanking God that you didn't die in it because some folks died in it. Yes. It's a dangerous thing to know what not to do and you still do it, but you die in it. Yes. Yes. That means there was no grace extended for you to even repent. Ooh, Jesus. That's the fear of God. And so when we look at this overseer, I'm grateful that we're talking about these soul ties because if these soul ties are ever going to be severed, I believe it is imperative and necessary to take steps before you can even move forward in your life. Because some people, you know, you, if you are in a situation and all the time you say, why is all the time this happens to me? Yes. Then you ought to ponder on that a little deeper. Yes, 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 yes. Because could it be that somebody has has put a spell on you, or that somebody has set up a demonic altar, and or somebody has made a vow with uh, the enemy, and now you are the one that yes, have to pay yes, for that. Yes, 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 yes. See, when we're dealing with warfare and spiritual stuff like this, here some folk get nervous. Come on, yes, and they get yes. scared. What we're doing is we are exposing an yes, enemy yes, to you yes, yes, yes. to help you understand that some patterns and some cycle, son, had nothing to do with you. It just had to do with somebody sacrificing you and you weren't even aware of the sacrifice. Yes, yes, yes. And so we're going to try to get through this and, and your question ought to be, man of God, how do I, I rip off this so to how, how do I tear this thing off me? How do I burn this thing? How do I get rid of this agreement? Well, we're going to give you, a, try to give you some points here today. I don't know how yes, far yes, we'll yes. go. But number one, the first thing, if you're taking notes, the first thing of destroying soul ties is the first next thing you got to do is acknowledge that a soul tie even exists. Yes, 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 yes. And then you have to be honest with yourself because I think sometimes what happens is when you don't accept the responsibility of this soul tie, you would just think it's just bad luck. Come on, Pastor. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, come on, Pastor. So then you go buying rabbit's foots. Come on, Pastor. That's, that's, that's feeding into another witchcraft spirit. Yes, yes, Cause yes. Because you, you put, y'all y'all act like y'all like ain't never seen a little furry rabbit foot. Like you, you, they used to, they used to, y'all used to buy them on, on chains and put them on your keychains and, 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 you know, and you're not even knowing that that little poor rabbit was the sacrifice. Come on. That poor rabbit was the blood covenant that was shed uh, uh, to, to set up a covenant with Moloch. Yes, 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 yes. So then, therefore, you can be the one that will experience trouble, pain, and heartache. 
Come on, Pastor. Are you walking with me now? So if we first, if we first got to acknowledge this, and a lot of times, overseer, the problem with acknowledging something is what you just said earlier. Yes. Every man seems to think he's right in his own eyes. Yes, 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 yes. That within itself presents a problem because you don't want to acknowledge the fact that you do have a soul tie. Yes, 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 yes. So how could I renounce something that I don't want to acknowledge? Yes, yes, come on. That's good I thought it was too, overseer. Yes, yes. So if I don't acknowledge it, then I'm not going to renounce it because I don't have the problem. Y'all have the problem. But you're the only thing in, yes, yes, yes. in common with every situation. Can I just tell somebody if y'all would talk back to me today, to thine own self be true. Yes. To thine own self be true. Yes. Don't lie to you. It's a bad thing when you lie to yourself. It's one thing to lie to somebody else, but it's another thing when you lie to you. And if you believe in your lie, you start believing that you can fly. So you will get up on that balcony, put a towel around your neck, and jump because you think you can fly. Yes, yes, yes. That's, yes. Y'all, y'all said, that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, but that's how you do in the spirit. Yes, 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 yes. You think that you got the power to hang around somebody because yes. you strong now. Yes, yes, yes. You're not as strong as you think you are. Yes. Scripture said, take heed lest you fall. If I'm being delivered, one thing about me, when I was getting delivered from smoking weed, one thing I, I didn't do is I didn't go around my family members that kept smoking weed. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, Pastor. Now, some of y'all, y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing because you probably still hanging around because you like the smell of it. it. Now, it grieves me. It stinks. When I smell it, I, I first ask, oh, say, so you smell that stinking stuff, but you, you're not tired of it. Yes, yes. And that which you're not tired of, you permit to be around you. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I, I know I'm talking truth here. Just like, just like now. I, I never was a person that liked to drink, but I can't stand the smell of alcohol. Jesus, Jesus. So I don't want to be around it. Now, many of you, you, I got the power. I, you know, I, I can sit there and I can, oh, 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 many of you flirt this way. I just take a, a casual drink for the go good with my steak. I like, I like a little red chardonnay. You know, with, the, with all them enzymes and it, it's going to help with my blood and, you know, and Jesus said it's all right to have a little drink for stomach. Say you, you start justifying why, well, you know, uh, uh, there ain't no law against me creeping, you know, uh, uh, because all, all you do open up the door to the wine. Next thing you know, you're going to open up the door to the sex. Next thing you know, you're going to open up the door to the lies. Next thing you know, it, just, it, just, it, 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 it ain't, it's never just one door that's open. Y'all ain't going to be real. I'm trying to help some of y'all. It's never just one door that's open. That's why I don't even flirt with it. In other words, I don't play with it. Because I know me. And many say, well, you don't do that. No, I don't. Amen, Apostle. Amen. Amen. When I travel, I don't travel by myself. Because I know my proclivities. I'm not saying I'm not delivered. I'm not saying I can't go somewhere and not do nothing. No, but what I'm saying is why even put myself in that situation when I don't have to? Say amen to this. So when I look at this overseer, the part of acknowledging that it exists, you have to be honest with yourself. Amen, apostle. Let's look at some scriptures that uh, underpins that thought acknowledging that there's a problem. Yes. Let's go to Proverbs. I know we keep saying the scripture, but we want you to see it with your own eyes and those of you that are taking, taking notes, Proverbs 21 and 2. Amen. We want you to be able to write this down and revisit these scriptures. It says people may be right in their own eyes. Yeah. But the Lord examines their heart. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can think we're right in our own eyes, but it's the Lord that examines our heart. Yeah. Go to Proverbs 6 and 2. Amen. Say Proverbs amen to this. six and two, Amen. Proverbs, Proverbs six and six. I'm sorry, sixteen and two. I'm That's sorry. That's a good one too. Amen. Well, let's read it since you put it up there. If you have trapped yourself trapped by your yourself agreement, by your agreement, and are caught by what you said, yeah. verse next verse. Lord help us today. 
These are the vows that we have spoken. Yeah. Follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Ooh. Now swallow your pride, go and beg to have your name erased. Oh. That is the verbal soul ties ah. that, that we haven't talked yeah. about yet. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to make sure that whatever we are associating ourselves with and getting ourselves connected by way of a vow, yeah. the scripture is telling us you need to go and ask them to erase your name yeah. from it because once you give your word, you are bound by it. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And not only that, that's why when I see this, it goes back for co-signing. Yes. The scripture says, don't, don't, don't take or make a surety for no man. Yes. Many of you, 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 you know, my, my kids, they understand I, I, I was tough on them. Yes. I'm not co-signing nothing for you. Yes, yes, yes. So y'all quiet. Yes. If you don't understand, if they don't respect a covenant. Yes. If they don't understand and respect the agreement, guess who responsible for it? Amen. The person that signs. The person that signs. And if, if, if they don't get to Samoya and, and LaShawn Jenkins co-signed for it, we don't need Samoya. Come on, Apostle. We going after LaShawn. Yes, yes, yes. And Samoya could be enjoying the car. Yes. But LaShawn is going to be responsible for paying the yes, car. Yes, 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 yes. That's yes. why I don't, I don't co-sign for y'all. Amen. Don't even ask me to do something like that. Yes, yes, yes. When family members ask out, y'all tell them, no, I'm not doing that. I mean, the reality is, just imagine, if your credit was worthy, you would need somebody to co-sign for you. Shundo. That's already an indication that you're not good with credit, that you can't sign your name, Denise. Wow. Somebody has to sign for you because they don't trust that your, your credit is worthy wow. to extend it to you. So they ask you to go get uh, and, devil if, is, and if they bind it and, and, and if they don't allow you to get it with your credit, why would you sign your name on the line when they couldn't get it with their credit? It, it's just counterintuitive. It, it doesn't even make sense when you really think about that's it. That's how the soul tie works. That's how it gets started. You assume connection. the debt yes. of yes, yes. somebody else yes. that covenant. Yes, it just, it just trickles down to yes. somebody else assuming the debt. Yes, it's got to be paid, overseer. Yes, it, it don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what you think about it. Don't matter how you Come feel on, about Pastor. it. I can still watch this. I can still repossess the car. Come on, Pastor. Yes. But there's still a debt that has to be paid. Yes, 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 yes. You can renounce the spirit and get saved, but you still, some of you are going to suffer the consequences of the choice. Yes, Apostle. Yes, 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 yes. Lord, help us. Yes, here. yes, And yes. you may not, but your children may. Yes, yes. We, we see learned it. that at 930. Yes, we see it. Yes, yes, yes. It, go, it, it just keeps going. And that's why I'm trying to tell you, you ought not be mad at somebody else. Yes. Can, when I stopped, when I got the revelation of this, I wasn't mad at my mom and my daddy. Yes. I wasn't mad at my granddaddy and grandmama. Yes. I'm mad at me. Yes, yes, yes. But why are you mad at yourself? Because I let it keep going. Yes, yes, yes. And I declare and decree it won't go to my children. Yes, yes, yes. And I tell my children, if it hits your house, it's because you open up that door. Because you open the door. Y'all ain't got to say man. It's the truth. So, so I, I think that's good. Let's go to the next one. Proverbs 16 and 2. People may be pure in their own eyes, but, but the Lord examines their motives. That's another good one. We're, we're trying to show you through the word of God that we're not just saying this. No. Every man way is right in his own eyes. Yeah. You do what you do because you think what you're doing is right. Yeah. But if you don't line it up with the word of God, you don't have a paradigm. You don't have a, a, a standard to compare it against. If you're just comparing your standard against your own motives, your own rationale, you're going to fall to the wayside every single time because you don't have a paradigm or an example to live by. Go to verse 25 in, in Proverbs 16, 25. Dangerous. This, Dangerous. I'm, we, we're going to give you several scriptures. There is a path. Before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. This is why God gives counsel because there's safety, Ladesia, in counsel. People who have been there before you've gone there can give you warning about what you're about to get into if you just take heed to counsel because in your mind, you think that the path you're taking is right. But Mother Delena, at the end of that path comes death. And we have to believe, it's either we're going to believe the word of God or we're not, not going to believe the I word of God. That, but the word of God does not come back void. Don't lie. Go to Proverbs 30 and 12. 
Listen, church. Please get, write get these your scriptures freedom. down. Get your freedom today. Get delivered. Proverbs 30 and 12. Amen. There is a generation. Is this, give it to me in King James. Let me see if it says that in King James. This good stuff. Yes. There it is. There is a generation Ooh. that are pure in their own eyes. You, you, this generation that we're in now, these young, you, it's hard to, to, com, to give y'all counsel because you refuse to listen because in your eyes, your ways are pure. You think you can do what you want to do and think it's supposed to end like this, but there is nothing new, beloved, under the sun. If you do this, this is going to happen. If you do that, this is going to happen. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. And yet, you are not washed from your filthiness. You're right because in your own life. When, when, listen here. Go, go to Ephesians 2 and, and we'll come back to this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1. Hallelujah. Because this, there's a generation of us who think that we can create our own laws and do what we want to do and we still want to be blessed. And it doesn't work like that. You had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. You can give me that in NLT as well. God made all of us alive. You were once dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Verse number two. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. When God sets a standard in the word of God and you are able to read it for yourself and you make the decision that my way is right in my own eyes, you are under the swoon of the enemy of the unseen world and you're obeying his dictates because you refuse to obey God. There's no two ways about this the reason why you're all disobeying the commands and the instructions of God is because you're under a spirit of the enemy the prince of the powers of the air he's making you to defy the word of God it's not because you write in your own eyes go back to, to Proverbs 30 and 12 you're going in your own direction, but you have to be mindful that you haven't been washed from your filthiness. You still got a lot of that worldly way in you. Yeah, yeah. This is what's making you think and process the way that you're thinking and processing. Yeah. And the enemy makes you feel like you justified in that. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you were blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.